everyone. What happens when K2, the south node of the moon, has gone into the seventh house of your chart? Good from the ascendant birth chart, but also D9. This will have application. You can see it from moon sign as well, birth chart. But please remember when you have K2 here, Rahu is with the moon, a special conjunction to also see. And of course, if you have a Western horoscope, it's good for you too. But make sure that you have sign for a house system. Better still, get yourself a sidereal horoscope just to be accurate. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to sub below and let's begin. So what's the seventh house? It's who is looking at you. It's your partner, committed relationship, marriage, not love and romance, by the way, starting a relationship that's in the fifth house. So make a clear distinction here. It's the marketplace of life. Business is here. Business success, business partners, all of that is shown in the seventh house. But it isn't just who is committed to you, life partner, etc. It's who is attacking you as well. Don't forget, seventh house is the house of love and war. Conflict with other people, open warfare is also shown in the seventh house. Who is K2? K2 is a south node of the moon in the opposite sign to Rahu, who is the north node. K2 is actually a headless being. He doesn't see anything material. He's totally spiritual. He represents keys and he is the key, the key to moksha liberation. He's the only planet who will actually enable you to get free from this maya and illusion and to find the way out of this material prison house. But in addition to this, he is definitely a flag, a past life city accomplishment wherever he is in your chart, which you need to understand deeply. He is also a direct link to past life situation. Now, all of the planets represent past life karmas, but K2 is like a wormhole in space. He's like a time warp. He directly takes you directly into your past life experience. Now, K2 is very like Mongola. Like Mongola, he can lead an army. He's a very disciplined being when he is good in your chart, but completely lacking direction when he is afflicted. K2 is angry, impatient and extremely violent under affliction. And K2 can give mathematical ability, technical ability with small machines like computers especially and even astrological ability because he is terribly intuitive. He doesn't see anything externally. All of his knowledge comes from within. However, when afflicted, he can be a very separatist tendency. As I say, he can lead to disruption and even mistakes. So what's K2 doing for you in the seventh house? Well, just like in the first, fourth or tenth, in this Kendra axis, it's a switch point. It's a karmic switch point because this Sarpa snake, Rahu K2, is in the Kendra houses. Kendra are your direction in life. So karmically, you are going in a whole new direction. Of course, that's never easy and the karmas are coming directly from past life into your intimate relationships or your business affairs. What exactly are those karmas though? You'll only know by the sign. So check out K2 Karma's All Signs. The link is below to that video and again at the end. Take note of that because that past situation is coming up again directly affecting all the issues of the seventh house. Now, more planets with K2, more this complicated past life karma is. You have to look at that separately. Obviously, check all the aspect videos on my channel, certainly. In any case, it's a complicated axis because, as I'm going to say, Rock was pulling you into a whole new beginning. Confidence in yourself needs to come up. You need to find out who you are before you can connect to others. That's the problem. What do I mean for that? Well, you've got to find out who you are, what you are here for, but you have a strong need for security. K2 pulls you back into unfinished karma, as I have just pointed out. You are pulled very, very early into commitments in regard to intimate relationships. Some people here, because it's coming from past life, unfinished karma. 
that doesn't mean early relationships not going to work. Sometimes it can be a lifetime commitment. You've got to see seventh house lord, all houses, even D9 of answer. But what you have to understand is that you are directly experiencing some past life situation again. And these are coming to you in intimate partner relationships. One thing for sure in your 40s, because Rahu matures 42, K2 48, there's a big karmic shift in your whole orientation of your life, basically whole whole feeling about what you want to do with your life. Some people do get divorced. Some people marry again. Some people say no more relationships for me. Some people have a more spiritual commitment in their partnership. There is a big shift in the intimate relationship in your 40s and it's a good thing mostly. You see everyone at the heart of this K2 makes you extremist in your intimate connections. You give everything to the relationship, work so hard, want it to be perfect, want it to work. It's got to work. Why? Because it's a past life situation continuing. Do you see? It's got to work this time. That's what you think unconsciously, subconsciously. But then you become disappointed. No, it's not working again. It's not right. It's not how I would like it to be. You're a complete perfectionist in your in your intimate spousal situations, even business situations. If it's not up to scratch, you just say no more of this, thank you. Or it doesn't have to go that far. You're just always arguing, petty arguments, petty disputes. K2 is a lot of dissatisfaction. And what you tend to do though, because you don't want the bother of all of these arguments and disputes, is taking all your energy you become detached. People with this K2 7th house become detached from the whole relationship situation. Sometimes you can't even listen to the partner. You become so distracted, so detached. Why? Because Rahu's pulling you, this is the whole axis, into what's in it for me. I've got something to do and this relationship is taking all of my energy. You see what I've seen happen? happening here is the partner begins to actually doubt your commitment. Are you really listening to them? You may be sitting there, you may be talking to them, you may be present, but are you fully present? Are you really listening? Are you really there? Partner does not feel as though you are. At some point, this can also be a factor. It's deeper than that because K2 is spirituality. So you become detached because in some way, spiritually, it's not fulfilling you. On the other hand, K2 here can give a most deep, committed, spiritual relationship unlike any other. It's going to be extreme. It's never going to be a middling everyday relationship situation. That's just not going to happen. Now, mostly K2 shows your situation, your behavior in this intimate partnership. But actually, sometimes you have to see the whole chart. K2 shows something about partner who becomes difficult, who becomes detached, who becomes unavailable. That can happen sometimes. So what's the solution? How to make K2 work well for you, everybody, in this seventh house? First thing, as I've just said, you've got to find your purpose. You've absolutely got to have confidence in yourself again. You've got to feel self-sufficient, happy in yourself. Then when you have a real feeling of your own direction, relationships come on board. Until then, it's just very imbalanced situation that's going to happen. But a big secret here is that K2 is about having kids. He does support children. He, the only material thing, the only material thing K2 supports is producing kids. So if you have children and you support them and you commit to them, of course, then K2 is going to keep the whole relationship together in a much more satisfactory way. That is generally seen. But even outside of children, K2 is about spirituality. The whole relationship has to go onto a whole different platform. There has to be sense of spiritual direction, which is shared together. What do they say? 
Pray together, stay together. That's so true with this K2 7th house. It isn't just relationships, everyone. It's even business. Business situation, self-employment, business partnership can be stressful with this K2. But if you are committed to not just profit, not just me, 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 what, you know, what can I get? That's never going to work. It's just going to flop the whole business. When you are committed to giving something back, concerned about future generations, humanity, giving something to the world, just like having kids, you see, being committed to future of the planet in some way, future of people on the planet, anything such as that, doing some business, supporting humanity in some way, it can be extremely successful. See, in the end, this whole Raku K2 axis is about standing on your own feet, but it's about giving back to society, giving back to others. But you can only give when you know who you are. So find your own direction, find your own sense of center self and everything else falls into place. Marital situation, business situation, everything comes from this newfound security. Check out K2's Karma's in all signs, of course, up on your screen right now. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to sub below. Goodbye for now. God bless you all.